for way, for way too long. For way too long. And they're so dark. But nevertheless, nevertheless, never the... Nevertheless. So today we're gonna read Glass Sword by Victor.
it is safely carried up, the process goes much faster. One after the other, guardsmen follow one another up the ladder, slowly clearing the corridor. Many of them are nurses, men and women marked by wife's shifts with varying degrees of bloodstains. I don't waste time waving others ahead, faking politeness like a lady should. We're all going to the same place, so when the crowd clears a little, the ladder opening to me, I are for I hurry forward. Cal follows. His presence combined with mine parts the guardsmen like a knife. They step back quickly, some even stumbling to give us our space. Only Farley stands ground, stands firm, one hand around the ladder. To my surprise, she offers Cal and me a nod. Both of us. That should have been my first warning. The steps on the ladder burn in my muscles, still strained from near sea. The arena, my capture. I can hear a strange howling up above, but it doesn't deter me in the slightest. I need to get out of the Mersif as fast as possible. My last glimpse of the Mersif, looking back over my shoulder, is strange. Angling over Farley and into the medical station. They are wounded still in there, motionless beneath their blankets. No, not wounded, I realize as I pull myself up. Dead. Higher up the ladder, the wind sounds and a bit of water drips down. Nothing to bother with, I assume, until I reach the top and the open circle of darkness. Ah, a storm howls so strongly that the rain fell sideways missing most of the tube and ladder. It stings against my scraped face, drenching me in seconds. Autumn storms, though I cannot recall a storm so brutal as this. It blows through me, filling my mouth with rain and biting salty spray. Luckily, the Mersif is tightly anchored to a dock I can barely see, and it holds firm against the rolling. Great waves below. This way, a familiar voice yells in my ear, guiding me off the ladder and into the Mersif hull, slick with rain and seawater. Through the darkness, I can barely see the soldier leading me, but his massive bulk and his voice are easy to place. Bree, I close my hand on his, feeling the callousness of my older brother's grip. He walks like an anchor, heavy and slow, helping me off the Mersif and onto the dock. It's not much better. Metal eaten with rust, but it leads to land, and that's all I care about. Land and warmth, a welcome respite after the cold depths of the ocean in my memories. No one helps Calp down for the mercy, but he does fine on his own. Again, he's careful to keep some, di some distance. Walking a few respectable paces behind us, I'm sure he hadn't forgotten his first meeting with Bree back in the stills when my brother was anything but polite. In truth, None of the barrows cared for Cal, except Mom and maybe Giza, but they didn't know who he was then. Maybe should should be an interesting reunion. The storm makes talk difficult to see, but I can tell the island is small, covered in dunes and tall grass, a tumble as tumultuous as the waves. A crack of lightning out on the water illuminates the night for a moment, showing the path in front of us. Now out in the without the cramped walls of the Mersif or the under train, I can see we number less than 30, including the wounded. They head for two flat concrete buildings where the dock meet, meets the land. A few structures stand out on the gentle hill above us, looking like bunkers or barracks. But what lay behind them, I can't say. The next bolt of lightning, closer this time, shivers delightfully in my nerves. Bree mistakes it for cold and draws me closer, draping one heavy arm over my shoulders. His weight makes it hard to walk, but I endure. The end of the dock cannot come faster. No, the end of the dock cannot come fast enough. Soon I'll be inside, dry on solid land, and reunited with the barrows after too, far too long. The prospect is enough to get me through the bustle of wet activity. Nurses load the wounded onto an old transport. Its storage bed covered in waterproof canvas. It was certainly stolen, as was everything else. The two buildings on land are hangars, their doors ajar enough to reveal more transport waiting inside. There's even a few boats anchored to the dock. 
bobbing in the great waves as 